Lesson 8.1b Connecting Fractions and Percents A percent is a ratio that compares a number to 100. Percent means per 100. 1% 1 means one part of 100, one out of 100. And it's equivalent to the ratio 1 to 100. We can write that as a fraction as 1 hundredth. So a percentage can be written as a fraction with a denominator of 100. 25% means 25 out of 100. It's equivalent to 25 hundredths. We have a 10 by 10 grid and 25 are shaded in. That's 25 of 100. That's 25% of the grid is shaded in. And we can simplify 25 hundredths by dividing by the greatest common factor, 25, and we see it's equal to one-fourth. That tells us one-fourth is equal to 25%. We can use a percent bar model to model the ratio 1 to 2, expressed as a fraction as one-half, and find an equivalent percent. Our model represents 100, or we can say it represents 1, if we're doing it as a fraction, we divide it into halves. We shade half of it. Half of 100 is equal to 50, so half of 100% is equal to 50%. We can find half of 100% with multiplication. We have half of 100%. We think of the of as multiplication, so we have 1 half times 100%. 100%. And we can write this with a denominator of 1, so we can multiply straight across. We're going to get 100 as our numerator and 2 as our denominator. And this is a division problem. We think 100 divided by 2, that's going to be a 50. We have our percent sign. It's 50%. And percentages can contain fractions or decimals. Here we have a percent bar graph, and we need to find one-third of 100%. We split the bar graph into three equal parts, and we shade one-third of it. We can do one-third times 100%. That's going to equal one-third times 100 over 1, which gives us a 100 for a numerator and a 3 for a denominator. And if we do 100 divided by 3, we're going to keep getting a 3 in the quotient, and we're going to be able to keep bringing zeros down. We can stop, we learned in Lesson 5.1c, which I'll have linked in this description, that we can just stop because I could add a decimal point here and another zero and then bring it down and say 3 goes into 10 again, and then we'd have a point 3 here, and we could just keep going and going and going, but if we stop, as we learned in Lesson 5.1c, we can use the remainder as the numerator and the divisor as the denominator, and we'll have 33 and one-third percent. If we did add the decimal point and added more zeros, we could just keep bringing them down, and every time a zero would come down, we'd have another 10, and say 3 goes into 10 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. We'd subtract and get a 1 again. We can add another 0 and bring it down and say 3 goes into 10 three times. And we could just keep going and going and going. And it's a lot easier to just stop. And if we have the same number repeating, we can just put a bar over the top of that. And we're going to learn more about decimals in percentages in Lesson 8.2. So you may have seen this sign before if you watch my videos. There can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than the other. So we can find the percent that is equivalent to 3 fifths by finding the percent that is equivalent to 1 fifth and multiplying it by 3. We want to find 1 fifth of 100 percent that's one-fifth times 100%. That's one-fifth times 100 over 1. 
which is equal to 100 over 5. And 100 divided by 5 is 20. That would be 20% 20 for 1 fifth. Now we just multiply this by the 3. Because we had 3 fifths, that would give us 20 times 3 is 60, so that's 60%. And we can find 3 fifths of 100% by multiplying 3 fifths times 100%. So instead of doing the 1 fifth, we just do the 3 fifths. And we get 3 fifths times 100 over 1, because we want to multiply straight across. That's going to give us 300 over 5 times 1 is 5. And we do 300 divided by 5, which gives us 60. It's 60%. So here's 1 fifth. That's 20%. Here's 2 fifths. That's 40%. And 3 fifths is 60%. Either way, we'll get the same answer. We'll get the correct answer. So now we finish this lesson and we're going to move on to the last part of 8.1. We're going to talk about using benchmarks and proportional reasoning. Do you remember working with benchmarks in fourth and fifth grade? It's like it's a familiar number that we use as a point of reference. So I hope you'll join me for next time and I hope you have a really nice day. Bye.